Chapter 12, Slide 1. In this chapter, we will focus on the on-field assessment technique, including primary and secondary surveys, and also the implementation of the emergency action plan. We will further discuss in detail the initial injury treatment for acute musculoskeletal injuries, including the RICE method. Slide 2. The emergency action plan is also referred to as the Emergency Medical Plan or Crisis Management Plan. Refer to slide two for the pertinent questions in developing the Emergency Action Plan for the classroom or physical education environment. Refer to slide three for the components of the emergency action plan to be included in athletics. Most schools have a crisis management plan that includes protocols for managing fire, earthquakes, and security breaches. However, many schools do not acknowledge such plans for medical injuries and illness occurring in athletics or physical education. Take some time this week to investigate what type of emergency action plan your school has. It may be helpful for you to have an appointment with your AD or administrator to discuss this. If an emergency action plan is in place, use this document as the foundation to prepare a more customized plan for your athletic team. In PE 565, you will have the opportunity to develop the emergency action plan for your class or other venue. Once you have identified the plans available at your place of employment, begin to answer the questions posed on the slides 2 and 3 as they pertain to the classroom or athletic field. Slide 4. Review the information on slides 4 through 15 as much as needed depending on your current level of knowledge and certification. The PowerPoints will guide you in your reading. In the subsequent slides, Locate the requested information from the textbook. Slide 16. Acute care is the care provided immediately after the injury until 72 hours thereafter, depending on its severity. The acronym that will be used to remember the treatment plan is RICE. Refer to the next slides for additional information. Slide 17. 
Rest. If the athlete is limping, he or she must be fitted with crutches. Remember, it is impossible to walk off any injury. You may have heard or even said this common line, just walk it off, but what does that really mean? How can we really walk off anything? So limping requires crutches, bottom line. Slide 18, ice. Ice can be applied with a bag of crushed or cubed ice, the use of the antique water bottle as shown in the picture, or even a bag of frozen vegetables. Sometimes we think that if a little bit of something is good, then a lot of it is even better. This is not the case with using ice. We apply ice for 20 minutes on and approximately 40 minutes off. The reason we do this is to prevent skin and tissue damage from the excessive cold. Ice is also used to manage pain. The body can only perceive one sensation at a time. When we apply ice, the body perceives the cold and the touch, which then closes the gate to the pain fibers. This is why it is called the gate theory. Studies have shown that elevation is just as, or more important than ice alone. Therefore, be sure you elevate the injury above the heart as much as possible. Slide 19. Compression can be applied using elastic wrap or athletic tape. Be sure you tape towards the heart so that you encourage the swelling and blood flow away from the injury. Slide 20. Again, elevation is emphasized. If you are dealing with a shoulder injury, it's best to recline in a lazy boy chair because sleeping in bed can be very painful. For ankle injuries, you can incline the entire bed frame or simply place numerous pillows for elevation. Slide 21. Sometimes coaches and physical educators feel compelled to move an injured student athlete. Realize that after the injury, the ground can actually act as a splint if needed. Keep the individual where he or she lies, implement your emergency action plan, and treat for shock by covering the athlete with a blanket. Remember not to give anything to drink in case he or she needs surgery. Thirst is a sign of shock. There is a video clip that demonstrates the elastic sling. This sling can be used to secure any upper extremity injury. Please refer to this when possible. After you have completed this chapter, you can begin preparing your response to the third part of the forum located under Session 1. Identify one new or reiterated piece of knowledge from Chapters 6, 9, 12, and 28 and explain how you incorporate this knowledge personally or professionally.